keep in mind, and I'm not going to ever be pushy with this, um, but if you feel feel necessary or feel it in your heart that you do want to adopt um, or you're kind of on the fence about it, please do go check out a parrot rescue that you love, you trust, you got a good relationship with, and check out and see if they have any of these uh, birds that are in this list that I'm talking about. But also consider birdbreeders.com and definitely read the reviews on different aviaries and learn as much as you can about the bird, whether they're out of breeders or out of pair residents. Hey Broob Squad, what's up? Um, welcome to my YouTube channel. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Victoria Ryan. And <laughs> this little blue dude here is Popple's My Quaker Pair. And the little green guy beside him is Yoshi, my yellow side green cheek pair, Keith, also known as Conyer. Really leaving me already. <laughs> so first of all, you know, I want to apologize uh, to you guys uh, for kind of the drab setup right now. Um, a lot of you already know I'm in the process of moving, so <laughs> things have been looking a little dead lately. So I did get this white Christmas tree here. Say hi to Frosty. <laughs> <laughs> to hopefully liven things up a little bit. And uh, this is my bird's first time seeing um, a white Christmas tree. So if they're not in this video very much, um, I do apologize for that. And I did cut my finger on Frosty over here, so um, please excuse my redneck band-aid. Um, anyway, 10 years later, let's get into this video. Here's the deal about these parrots, you guys. They are parrots that I have deemed as underrated. And I want to dedicate this video for those of you that have commented in my previous beginner parrots video, top 10 beginner parrots video. A lot of you gave me so many different parrot species to consider. You're like, what about this one? What about this one? And it did spark so much interest in me because I was like, wow, you guys, there are so many parrots out there that are so underrated. Um, but I do want to let you guys know, these aren't the prettiest parrots, most of these, okay? They're not the most eye-catching. They're not... And, and I by no means mean this as these are ugly parrots. No. These are parrots that get, oftentimes get overshadowed by sun conures, by gen days, um, by eclectuses, especially females. You know, parrots that are just so good, They're, and they may be a better option for you. But yes, they are not that brightly colored. Um, I want to give them credit where credit is due, because they may be a better option for you. So keep this in mind when you are watching this video. Do not be um, deterred from any of these species, because they aren't that bright colored yellow and oranges, you know. Keep them in mind because they are amazing birds and one of these or maybe more may fit your lifestyle. So let's get into these. The first one that I want to talk to you about is called, and please forgive me if I mispronunciate any of this stuff. Um, for those of you that are on my Twitch and watch my streams, you hear me mispronounce stuff all the time so you know. Um, but the first one is referred to as a, it's called a kakariki. You have a lifespan between Anywhere from 10 to 15, some live up to 20. They are so incredibly active. They can learn tricks, they're super goofy, um, they can potentially learn to talk, and overall they're just, they're just great companions. Um, but they can also be very independent too, so if you want to steer away from a species that is super clingy, and you're like, man, I just, I can't handle that cockatoo love, Check out Kakarikis because they can be very independent and they are good provided the right toys. Good with just being on their own and they're also very entertaining to watch. Now, with that being said, biggest concern that I could say about Kakarikis that um, I want you to know, they are labeled as flying birds and what this means is they prefer to fly. So this is one species, you guys have probably heard my thoughts and beliefs on trimming um, birds' wings. There's a time and place for it, um, depending on every bird and human situation. But with kakarikis, they're one species that I will say, please don't trim their wings because they are so active and they are the happiest when they're flying. I know the people that are against others owning parrots will lay the excuse of parrots should be flying, parrots should be free. Parrots fly for survival. You know, they don't do it just because it's fun. I'm sure, yes, they enjoy flying, duh, but it's kind of along the same lines as humans. You know, we love to run. 
But do we want to run for miles upon miles upon miles a day? Some of you weirdos might. But for us normal people that are like sitting on the couch eating our Twinkies, we don't want to run all the time. So that's the majority of the species of pears. They enjoy flying. They like it. But if it's not necessary to fly 10 miles a day, they ain't going to do it. But with Kakarikis, they are the happiest. They are the most mentally stable <laughs> when they're flying. They need space and someone that can handle their high energy, high activity levels. So keep that in mind. You guys, so this next one, I got so many comments on. So many people were like, why didn't you include lineola? I can never say it. Lineolated, lineolated parakeets. Why didn't you put them in there? I know, right? And this is a lot of times because they are overshadowed by budgies, lovebirds, and parallettes. But you may have heard of these species that I just butchered the name, but they're also referred to as linnies. These birds, you guys, you cannot go wrong with linnies. Um, they are one species that I would recommend to just about any bird enthusiast. They span about 15 to 20 years, you know, some less, some more, um, but that seems to be the average. Um, they are very cute, they're very fun loving, they're very calm, they're just, they are such a good little buddy to have. They can potentially talk, um, they're goofy, they're, I mean, they're just honestly just great birds. And they are probably honestly one of the best you know, demeanors and such a small parrot. So if you're wanting to find um, a parrot for your child or um, if you are a brand new beginner parrot owner, um, when you do see them at first glance, you may even think that they're a budgie. Um, they kind of got that budgie appearance, but if you get a closer look, they are very stocky. Like they look like, compared to a budgie, it's looked like they got like a, like a good chest workout, you know, but they skip leg day. I know there's gonna be someone that's like, there's no such thing as a low maintenance bird. Yes, we all know. They are considered to be on the very, very low end of the maintenance scale with birds. So if you want one that is not as messy, check out a Lenny because, um, yeah, there's, there's less mess involved. They're less maintenance. Their care is pretty cut and dry. Um, just, yeah, they're pretty, they're honestly just easier. And there's nothing wrong with saying that either. So honestly, like if you're on the fence, like you really just love budgies, check these guys out first though, because they are typically less feistier. They are just overall just a better demeanor about them. So check out Linnies. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised if you don't know much about them yet. I think you're really going to like them. So as far as the concerns, you guys, there's not really much here in this category, I had to really dig deep like, man, what would anyone see wrong in a Lenny? Um, but really, it just comes down to personal preference. If you're not into super, super small parrots, they're not going to work out for you. You know, I think you're going to be wanting something more. One more quick thing, you guys, that I didn't realize this until I was researching. Apparently, their poop is not so pleasant. I know, no bird poops is, right? I, I think it just comes more of a shock, really, because they're such a tiny little cute bird and you see, like, their dog droppings. So the next one, oh my gosh, you guys, ugh, BBs. Um, probably going to butcher this. Brotogaris, Brotogaris are also referred to as canary winged parakeets. Just easier to call them BBs. They have a lifespan of same about 15 to 20 years, give or take. Some of their pros, they're sweet, they're loving, they're affectionate, um, and they grow a really close bond with their humans. They are a little bit larger than parrotlets and lovebirds, not by much, and they're not really known for talking. Yes, they can learn some words and phrases, but their species as a whole isn't really known as a talking species. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a parrot that you're really hoping will talk someday. Um, maybe consider something other than a canary wing. Some concerns that really set them apart from uh, budgies, lovebirds, and all of those, they're a bit louder. So... It's going to be iffy if you have an apartment and you're looking at a canary winged slash BB. Mm. But what I do find so fascinating about BBs is their history. Like, if you get a chance, you should really Google the history of canary wings. Going into the Conyers, uh, one of my favorite groups for obvious reasons. Um, but these are the black-capped Conyers. I rarely hear people talk about these. I do feel like other Pioras get kind of overshadowed by the typical green cheeks and all of their color mutations. They're very, very sweet. They're very, very loving. Um, they can potentially talk, but again, they're not really known for being a species that talks. Um, they're a lot like 
Well, a lot like Yoshi. You know how he, you see him in my videos? That's pretty much how black capped are. Um, I've heard people even call them black caped, whatever. I call them black caps. But anyway, they are such sweet birds. They're one of the quieter conures. Um, they are goofy. They're acrobatic. They're just hilarious. And to be honest with you, they are a toddler. And that's what brings me into the concerns about black caps. Yes, they are hysterical. They will crack you up. They are such freaking clowns and they are just birds that you just enjoy having because they are typically social. Um, they want to be with you. They want to be your buddy. They want to see what you're doing. They want to be involved. Um, but here's the deal with that too. With such a big personality comes potentially big behavioral issues, especially ones that will progress into something much worse and di more difficult to handle if you don't know what you're doing. So with that being said, they are nippy the first couple years of their life. I had that issue with Yoshi. It is very typical with Puras. They are a toddler that just never grows up. They're into everything. They'll try to steal your food. Um, they... They will try to, they will find ways to get into things that could potentially get them hurt. So I know we all say bird proof your home, but to be honest, it's difficult to bird proof your home entirely with a conure um, and with a black cat because they do, they, they're into everything, you guys. They are. So that's why I always recommend like having a separate play area for them away from the whole entire house because they, they will find a way to get into trouble. They are Dennis the Menace of the bird world. <laughs> they are typically more calmer and um, a better demeanor than um, my green cheek. So um, out of all the Pioras, black capped and also duskies. I mentioned in my beginner parrot video, so that's another option too. They're a lot, duskies and black caps actually remind me a lot of each other. The next one is the orange fronted conures, the half moon conure. These little dudes, they are so cute and they crack me up. Half moons, they really do fit that typical conure uh, demeanor and such. Like, they're all, they have so many similar personality traits. I know every bird is different ultimately, but as a whole, personality traits are very similar and half moons are no different. But I will say from what I noticed from Half Moon, they tend to be a little bit feistier, ultimately quite sassy. Um, that's what I would say would be the biggest differences. But again, we're kind of splitting hairs here because as a whole, they are all very similar. They do tend to be the better talkers of the Conyers. You know, Conyers as a whole aren't really known for talking. Does it happen? Can it happen? Yes, but they're not really known for it. And Half Moons are the species that typically do talk a lot more, potentially is a lot higher than the other conure species. Some of my other favorite ones, there's Nandays, there's the Maroon Belly Conures, but there's the Rosy Fronds, I think's how you say it too. Um, there's, of course, Duskies, like I mentioned before, and the Mitred Conures too are so pretty. I don't see them too often, but they are so pretty, and um, there's some other ones to check out as well. So if you're dead set on a Conure, but you haven't really found one that you like yet and that really suits you, um, check out any of these. Those are some of my other favorite ones. I will say real quick before I go to the next one, I say Nandays because I've had very pleasant experiences with Nandays. I think they're the sweetest birds ever, but they're, they can be quite destructive and loud, so do keep that in mind. Um, but again, use this as a guide. Red Rub Parakeet. Honestly, remind me a lot of the Rosie Burks. Rosie Burks are super sweet, and they are very recommended for uh, beginner parrot owners, which you can check in that video. Once again, I, I know I'm constantly referencing it, but there's a lot of other great species in there to uh, check out as well. But they do remind me of Rosie Burks as far as like just being an overall hardy bird. You know, um, I don't see them too often in pet stores or rescues or anything, but they are just ultimately like, again, another great bird species to consider. They're a type of bird that I would recommend around kids because they're not as nippy and they're not as, you know, like, like bite me. Really good, all in all, just great companions. They can be super independent, which is so nice for some of you if you work all day or whatever, or your kids are in school and life gets a little hectic. They are such good birds. They can play on their own. They can be independent, but at the same time, they do enjoy your presence. But again, not too much though. We They don't want a, handled a lot. They kind of remind me kind of cat-like. Like they want to be with you for a little bit, but like not too much. And they want you to love them, but not too much. You know, like, does that make sense? 
And they just sing beautiful tunes. Like, yeah, they're not really known for talking, but they sing. And they'll whistle. It's super cute. Now, I will say some of the concerns with these that, yes, even though I say that they are typically good with kids, they do have the potential to be aggressive and territorial. They, they're they probably more so like this with other birds. Like, if you're just, if, if you are wanting a parrot, um, but you think in the long run, like, future on you will want another one I don't recommend that you get a red rump because they just they're a, like a one bird kind of deal you know so they are considered a grassland bird as well so with that being said they will need a bigger cage uh, they will need more space to hop around and run and stuff next one you guys oh the this species like tugs at my heart strings the brown-headed parrot you guys, these parrots, I'll be honest, they're not the prettiest. They don't have the brightest colored feathers like a lot of these parrots I've mentioned before. But these, I could see where people would not be attracted to them. But please hear me out on this species because they remind me a lot of the dusky conures in the sense of demeanor and companionship. They have a lifespan from anywhere 20 to 30 years. They're the type of species that just overall makes a great companion. They are quiet, which makes them great for some of you that live in apartments or if you live in a home, you know, surrounded by neighbors. They build a close bond with their human companion, which is super great. Um, I personally love birds that are like that. If you give them the right toys, they can be independent. They don't need you, you know, handling them 24-7. Being near you makes them happy. So, it's just, they're a great parrot. And I feel like, too, they get overshadowed so much by Myers and Senegals. You know, I mentioned Myers parrots in my other video, and I just absolutely love Myers. I think they're great. And yes, Myers and Senegals, they aren't the prettiest birds either by society standards. But you see a lot of videos go viral, especially with Senegals doing goofy stuff and, you know, they're mimicking, they're doing tricks and all this. And I feel like, you know, when a viral video goes out like that and brings all this attention to the species, well, now everybody wants one because they think their parrot's going to do the exact same thing as that Senegal on the internet did. And in turn overshadows parrots like the brown head that really just need a chance. They are great companions. They're awesome birds. Um, and yeah, maybe they're not in those viral videos, but they're a great companion. They're, they're, I mean, there's not a whole lot of concerns with them. I will say they are stubborn, but so are Senegal's and Myers. They have a uh, stubborn side too. But with brown heads, I feel a lot of the times... They're like this, um, they're a teddy bear inside. Like, when they get all stubborn and stuff, yeah, they put all this big front like, yeah, I'm big and bad. But really inside, they just want a hug. This next one, um, is an interesting one to say the least. It's not a parrot, but I do want to mention them. Heard people say this differently, but I call them mina birds. Um, I've heard them called moinas, minas. I just call them minas. So, um, these birds are... Very unique. If you know anything about minas, I guarantee you the first thing that comes and pops up into your mind is their talking ability. They're amazing talkers. They come like second to African grace. They are amazing. They sound so much like a human's voice. It is insane. Like, you know how Popples, I mean, you know he's saying peekaboo, but it doesn't really resemble a human's tone. But with minas, it's so fascinating how they can sound like a human they can be independent they're good on their their own um but they love being with you too like they love hanging out with you they love talking with you and having conversations like minas are so freaking cool you guys i love them but it can be quite difficult to find them keep that in mind and they do range from anywhere to thousand to four thousand dollars i know that um uh, that huge uh money gap there is kind of frustrating because you're like a thousand to four thousand but it's so weird sometimes Sometimes you'll find a mina that's like a thousand dollars which I've seen and I've even seen them like for eight hundred dollars um, from a reputable breeder but then I'll see them go as high as four and you're like what their bites aren't typically as scary yes duh they hurt it's a parrot bite for Christ's sake even though they may sound like the perfect bird they're unique they're different they are not your typical sun conure or green cheek so unique they talk they're friendly they're active it sounds like I'm really talking up the species like they are the ultimate perfect species no, they do come with concerns. Um, and some of the biggest ones that I would say, the top concern I would say about minas, 
they are high maintenance. If you're used to that typical parrot care routine or that's what you've studied more on um, in your search for a bird, you might want to take a look and a little gander at their care routine. It is more complicated. It is, well, like I said, more high maintenance. Their diet consists of mainly fruits, which, hello, can you imagine the poops? The next one, I know these are super popular, but I feel like they get overshadowed a lot. And these are the Alexandrian parrots. I love these birds. I know I say that with every species, but like these birds are so cute. I mean, they live from anywhere from 25 to 35 years. They have been favored by royalty and for good reason. They are just a great parrot. Like I know I say that a lot. You're probably like, you're saying that about all of them and they're just great parrots, but they are. They're just good to have just hanging out with you. Um, they're good with just playing on their own beside you, but also they want some lovin's. So it's that great balance I feel like you know I don't get me wrong I love cockatoos I love them so much I would love to have 55 of them I love their over clinginess and their loviness and just that like I just want to like want to rub their feathers in my face but it's nice to have that good healthy balance of like okay they're good on their own um, but also they're fine with being with you you handling them with that being said though they do come with their own set of concerns. They are loud. They are very stubborn. And when I say stubborn with this species, I mean it is their way or the highway, which makes you wonder how the, they matched well with a king or a queen. I don't know. But they have to have it their way. And it can be difficult in training. And you know how I always say, like, in my Quaker Parrot videos, like, you stand up to the bully, man. Don't let him treat you like that. Um, with Alexandrians, you got to... It's a different type. You you can't go about what how I do with popples with this species. It's like, you're tricking them. And if you guys want to dedicate a video on this, let me know. But, like, how I would handle these parrots is not by standing up to the bully. I think it would just make things worse. Um, you got to make them think they're getting their way, basically. Kind of like how a toddler is, you know? Make them think they're getting their way, but really they're not. They're very destructive too, so they need plenty of uh, toys that they can chew on, shred, and again, they're super loud. Mealy Amazons, they're a very interesting bird. They live anywhere from 60 to 70 years. They are, they live a long time, and they go from a price range of anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. They are definitely more pricier, um, but they are referred to as the gentle giants of the Amazon parrots, which is great. So if you're wanting an Amazon parrot, look into the mealies because they are gentle. They're not really known for being um, overly nippy, um, overly destructive. They are just overall just that kind bird that you could take to uh, have your friends be around if, of course, they're well socialized. Um, but they're social, they're active, they're playful. They are another one that I just deem as just really great parrots to have around. As far as the clinginess scale, from Myers to Cockatoo, I would say they're right in the middle. Like, they're not as independent as a Myers, but they're not as overly clingy as a Cockatoo. So they're in the middle there is what I would consider them to be. They do form a really close bond with their human. So if you really want them to get along with everyone, still definitely keep them socialized because they do have the potential to be very gentle um, and very kind to other people and social they are another one that's just laid back relaxed good with hanging out with you um, can be very independent but also they, they love your love <laughs> now what I will say is definitely a concern like all of the other Amazons they are very loud but from what I've gathered and from what I've learned they aren't as shrieky as typical Amazons. Great, like if you're wanting a larger bird, if you want that but not that clinginess of a cockatoo, check out Mealy's. They are fantastic. They are so gentle, so cute, and I do feel like they do get overshadowed by other Amazons. Um, even though Amazons do have that typical green look, there are prettier ones than the Mealy's. Um, but definitely look at them. From these little, small, simple points kind of make you go, wow, you know, that I think that would fit my lifestyle. Check them out. Um, but yeah, and they go anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000, so they are pricey, but to me, um, 
the companionship that you're getting from these guys, I feel like it's worth it. Um, but yeah, and as a little bonus one, I do recommend that you do go to my beginner parrots video if you haven't seen it already because I did mention some other species that would still fit into this category of underrated parrots. And this last one, I know I'm on like the 15th one or whatever, but I do want to mention Pionises. I've said them in my uh, beginner parrots one, but they fit so well in the underrated parrots section, you guys. Oh my gosh, Pionises are so underrated, so unique, and their subtle beauty is amazing. Any of the species, to be honest, the Pionises are worth checking out. Yes, you're going to have some behavioral differences between the species, but as a whole, they're all fantastic, honestly. They, they are, they are so underrated. But yes, they don't look like a sun conure. But hey, I totally feel you for, uh, wanting a bright colored parrot. I was right there with you in the beginning. You know, new to parrots, new to the whole world itself. I was like, I want that bright, beautiful bird, you know, that I catching look um, and I feel like a lot of us are like that we're human but really once you get more and more like gravitate pulled into the parrot world the more you appreciate parrots um, the more species you find to appreciate and the more subtle beauties that you find in these parrots they're overshadowed a lot um, so check them out, you guys. I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. But um, anyway, that's it for me. I feel like I have rambled so long. I'm hoping this video doesn't end up 50 years long. But um, yeah, I enjoy these videos so much. I have a couple more planned that are similar like this to, uh, because I love learning so much about these parrots. Thanks to you guys. I've learned a lot too along the way. So thank you. I really appreciate um, your suggestions and other these these species that you've mentioned me so thank you so much I, I owe you guys a lot that is so cool i've learned a lot from this so thank you so uh with that being said um thank you guys so much for being here and hanging out with me um peck that subscribe button down below to become a member of the burb squad and follow me on my socials both instagram and twitter are both at victoria ryan if you're a gamer burb you can follow me on twitch i stream every tuesday thursday and sunday 8 30 p.m eastern standard time and i promise you guys once i finally made my family move things are settled i get my new youtube Twitch set up set up I promise things are going to look better I promise you're going to see more of me on my socials like Instagram and stuff I have so many cool ideas so many things planned and I really hope that you stick around and um, enjoy this ride with me and I just I love talking to you guys I love hearing about your lives and how your birds are doing and um, yeah and so if I don't get to talk to you very much until the new year um, I wish you all the best I wish you happy safe holidays and travels wherever you're going you guys <laughs> and uh, I wish the best for you guys and I hope 2020 is an amazing year for you all I have good a good feeling about 2020 I'm looking forward to it so yeah please stay safe you guys um, give your birds all a hug for me and yeah, hopefully I'll talk to you all soon, but thank you so much for being here. Yeah, and thank you for dealing with this drabby setup with my sticky Nutriberry infested couch. I promise things will get better. Um, but yeah, we'll get there. I'm super excited for 2020. 2019 was a big year for me, and I think 2020 is going to be even bigger. So I'm looking forward to it, but thank you guys so much, and I wish you all the best. And um I'll shut up now. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye, Burp Squad. I love you. You guys, look, look at this. Look at this. Really? Really? You know, people are going to think, wow, she doesn't love her birds. She didn't even put them in her video. Really? Look at this. Look at this, okay? This is what I'm dealing with. You guys, you completely ditched me in my video. Say Merry Christmas. Say Merry Christmas, everybody. Love you so much. Burp Squad out. Yo. I gotta go poop on mommy's curtains. Freaking chickens.